fire unleashes an explosion of growth. Natives and weeds. This time of rapid change can be both a threat and a renewal for our bushland. And a rare, limited time opportunity to rescue it from entrenched weed. The bush generally has the capacity to recover. Because it evolved with fire, plants will re-sprout, new seedlings will grow. So healthy bushland can look after itself. And most bushland types, other than rainforest, depend on the occasional fire to survive and thrive. But in many areas, things have changed. Much of our bush has new threats to deal with. It's been damaged, is being damaged by human impacts. In many places now, fire triggers the regeneration of both natives and weeds. The new arrivals can overwhelm the locals and win the race to reclaim the ground after fire. So the bushland's inbuilt resilience is no longer enough. It's at risk of changing forever as natives are replaced by weeds. That's where we come in. We can put the bushland back on the road to recovery and keep it there. This powerful force of nature, with the right help from people, can restore the bush to a level of health and strength that's been missing for years and dramatically boost its chances of surviving into the longer term. Fire and the rains, when they eventually come, often trigger regeneration of natives we never knew were waiting in the soil seed bank. And the weeds? for a short time at least, are vulnerable. We might finally get some leverage over difficult to treat weeds. They've been flushed out and their seed banks are pretty well used up. So we can break the cycle by preventing them from seeding again. We can now go in and work in previously impenetrable areas and all those regenerating native plants are ready to reclaim the territory. A word of caution though, the bush can't bounce back from fire again until it's had a chance to mature and replenish its seed banks. So too frequent fire is a real threat. If you're new to this, you might be feeling overwhelmed. But there are ways you can make a big difference with whatever time and resources you have. Our bushland really needs you right now. And with the right efforts, you will see rewards. The black summer bushfires were off the scale in their extent. So was the drought that preceded them. So we are in new territory. But experienced bush regenerators are accustomed to working in post-fire environments. And in most situations, we know what can help. We want to share that knowledge and help you to assist the bushland you care about. Here are some tips for effective post-fire weeding. Where the bush has the capacity to recover, let it do its job. We're here to assist by removing obstacles like weeds. Observe, have a good look around and note how various different parts of the site are responding. Then reassess regularly because conditions change quickly. Timing is critical. Watch and wait for the bushland to respond and wherever possible, intervene in the early stages where you have the most advantage. Prioritise. You may not have to treat every weed, at least not straight away. The main aim is to release regenerating natives that are about to be swamped by weeds. Minimise disturbance. Take care not to sacrifice too many of your regenerating natives by treading on them or pulling them out with the weeds. Leave most of the weed debris on site taking care with parts that can regrow. It can provide much needed shelter for fauna and there are more important tasks to spend your time on. Get good at telling the difference between natives and weeds, even at early stages. It can be tricky, but it's crucial, so you might need some help. If you're not sure, leave it until you can make sure. Learn the most efficient techniques and approaches for working with various weeds and situations. There are a few tricks of the trade that'll make your work much more effective. And habitat value. It's an important part of the weed removal equation, particularly after fire.